Is analyzing ingredient labels considered a party trick? Cause if it is, I think that tells you a lot about how fun I am at parties. <laughs> Hey Vs, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me, and today I wanted to kick off what I'm hoping will be a new series around analyzing ingredient labels of store-bought products. This is something I really enjoy doing. I really like going into drugstores and Sephora and turning over boxes and bottles and tubes and reading the ingredient labels and trying to figure out what they've done. Evaluating and learning how to evaluate the ingredient list of a professionally formulated product is not only a good way to improve your skills and knowledge as a formulator, but it's also a great skill to have if you also still like purchasing skincare products and cosmetics. I'm envisioning this series looking at a variety of different products, some that I'll choose and hopefully some that you guys will suggest. Different products will, of course, bring up different questions. So so as we look at a variety of different products and different ingredient lists, we can really learn a lot. So today I wanted to start by looking at a product I really like and have really enjoyed using and have purchased more than once. Also, this is a bit of a teaser for a upcoming blog post and formulation video. So this is a hand cream made by La Roche-Posay. It's part of their Cicaplast line. It's their Cicaplast Mains Barrier Repairing Cream. It's a thick, richly moisturizing, unscented hand cream that I find leaves my hands and skin incredibly soft. One of the things that first caught my eye about this particular hand cream is that it says right on the tube as part of the, like, the marketing call out, not the ingredients list, that it contains 30% vegetable glycerin. Vegetable glycerin is a really wonderful, inexpensive humectant, meaning it helps hold moisture to the skin. You'll find it in a lot of products, but you'll rarely find it at 30%, especially in a leave-on product, because vegetable glycerin, it kind of sticky. And so if you put a lot of something sticky in a product, it's not surprising that there's a pretty good chance that the end product could also be sticky. So seeing that this product contained 30% vegetable glycerin, I was really, really intrigued, especially since I really enjoyed using it. I didn't find it to be uh, annoyingly sticky or tacky. So let's start by taking a look at that ingredient list. All things considered, this is actually a pretty short ingredient list. One of the most important things to know when looking at an ingredient list is knowing that ingredients are listed in descending order, sort of concentration or amount of use. So we know that there's more water in here than glycerin, and then we know that there's more glycerin than there is butylene glycol, and so on and so forth. Since we know that this lotion is an emulsion, we know that there's going to be a few things that we're going to want to sort of find in the ingredient list, a few jobs that need to be done, and so let's find the ingredients that do those jobs. We know that there's going to be both an oil phase and a water phase. We know there's going to be an emulsifier, and we know there's going to be some sort of preservation system in there as well. In addition to those four essential jobs in a lotion, we can also start to perhaps form some hypotheses based on our experience with the product. It's a pretty thick lotion, but I don't find it to be sort of oily or greasy, so I would suspect that we would find some thickeners in there rather than a larger oil phase. Both a larger oil phase and thickeners can make for a thicker lotion, but a larger oil phase also makes for a heavier lotion. So I'm thinking it's gonna be more on the thickener side of things so that we get that body, but without any of the heaviness. Since this formulation contains so much vegetable glycerin, I would also suspect that there'd be something in there that would help reduce tackiness. So let's start breaking this ingredient list down. We can see that the first ingredient is water, which is not at all surprising. You're usually going to see water or some kind of watery thing like a hydrosol as the first ingredient on a lotion because the water helps keep the product feeling quite light. It is a reasonably inexpensive ingredient, but it's also very beneficial to the skin and it's a wonderful solvent. Up next is the vegetable glycerin, also not surprising because we know it's in there at 30%. Our third ingredient is butylene glycol, which is a type of humectant similar to propylene glycol or propanediol or even to vegetable glycerin. Our fourth ingredient is cetyryl alcohol. Now cetyryl alcohol is an emollient and a thickener made from a combination of cetyl alcohol and sterile alcohol. Now, just from reading this ingredient list, we don't know what the ratios there are. You can buy different ratios of cetyryl alcohol that will have more or less of the cetyl and the sterile. So 
don't really know what's going on there, but we do know that this is a thickening emollient. Up next is niacinamide or vitamin B3, which is one of my very favoritest active ingredients. Niacinamide does a lot of things, including downregulating sebum production, but I suspect the reason that it has been included in this cream is because it helps reduce transepidermal water loss and helps stimulate ceramide production. From the marketing copy, we know that niacinamide is present at 4%. So everything we're looking at after niacinamide is going to be present at less than 4%. Up next is glycerol stearate. So this is another thickening emollient ingredient and along with the cetyryl alcohol will also be helping stabilize the emulsion. Following that, we have some shea butter, wonderful emollient, gorgeous for skin shea butter. Given the scent of the product, I suspect they used refined shea butter as I'm not getting any of the sort of smoky, uh, fatty kind of notes that you can get from shea butter that hasn't been refined and deodorized. Our next two ingredients are two different dimethicone ingredients. So the first one is plain old dimethicone. And so this is going to be helping detackify the product. So that'll be kind of helping counter any of the tackiness that we might get from that high dose of vegetable glycerin. Dimethicone is also a great skincare ingredient. So not only does it help improve sort of the feel and kind of cosmetic elegance of a product, but it also helps protect the skin and it's very good for sensitive skin. Our next ingredient is PEG slash PPG18 slash 18 dimethicone. So this is going to be uh, one of our emulsifiers. The PEG part there kind of gives you a, a hint that there's going to be some emulsifying uh, properties in this ingredient. And then it should also be contributing some of that dimethicone slip that the plain old dimethicone does as well. Up next, glycerol stearate SE. And so glycerol stearate was already in there. Glycerol stearate SE is different from plain old glycerol stearate in that glycerol stearate SE, the SE stands for self emulsifying. And that is because the glycerol stearate SE contains a small amount of either potassium or sodium stearate, which is effectively saponified stearic acid. Just three ingredients to go. So the next one is sodium polyacrylate, which is an ingredient I hadn't really worked with before. So I Googled it and I learned that that is what is in diapers. It's the crazy, crazy, crazy absorbent filler in diapers that absorbs tons of moisture. So I'll throw a link to a YouTube video uh, in the description box below that I watched that shows basically uh, 30 grams of sodium polyacrylate having some water added to it and it just swells up like crazy. It's safe to say there's a very small amount of this sodium polyacrylate in this lotion, not only because it is the third last ingredient, but also because it is crazy absorbent. So we really wouldn't need much of it. If you look it up on Cosmetics Info, you can learn that it does a lot of jobs in products, but I think the ones that it's most likely performing here, it's just going to be sort of thickening the product and helping stabilize the emulsion. And it will also function as an emollient and you know, it absorbs water really, really well. So it'll sort of help uh, keep the product moist, potentially helping keeping it from drying out. Though I suspect that the uh, vegetable glycerin would do a lot more of that since we know that like it's, you know, way up there on the ingredient list. And our last two ingredients are coprylylglycol and phenoxyethanol. Those two ingredients might sound familiar. Those are the two ingredients that we find in Optifin, which is a preservative. So while we can't necessarily say that they used Optifin as their preservative, they definitely use the same ingredients that Optifin uses as their preservative. It's also worth noting that the performance of those two preservative ingredients is going to be boosted by the water locking powers of the vegetable glycerin and the butylene glycol. Strong humectants like that help lower water activity. I will throw a link to an interesting article about that in the description box below. And so that's pretty much it. We found our four phases. So the water phase is going to be the water, the glycerin, and the butylene glycol. In the oil phase, we have a selection of things. The cetyryl alcohol is the largest, most used ingredient. After that, we have the glycerol stearate, the shea butter and the dimethicone, all good emollients. Our emulsifiers, which are oil soluble, are the PEG dimethicone and the glycerol stearate SE. We have some sodium polyacrylate, which is going to be further stabilizing the emulsion along with the cetyryl alcohol and the glycerol stearate. 
but it also is going to be you know further adding to the emolliency of this product and then we have our preservatives the caprylglycol and the phenoxyethanol so that's about it hopefully you found that interesting and maybe a little educational and yeah if you have any products you'd like to see me sort of do this for uh, please leave them in the comments below but yeah thank you so much for watching please subscribe please click the thumbs up I hear that's a good thing and uh, yeah make sure you're checking out that description box for some helpful links and please check out my blog at humblebeeandme.com but thank you so much and I'll see you next time